Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the S-400, uh, one of the most dreaded surface-to-air missile systems that I know of. I mean, like, I always thought that the Patriot was a pretty good missile system. This thing just takes the cake. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the details for it, and I'll discuss some kind of the problems that we're going to face with engaging it, as well as how to successfully engage it. So first problem we have with this particular system is it has a terrifyingly long-range radar on board. Not only is the radar tremendously long-range, but it has a mast height of over 100 feet, which means it can stick its neck basically out of the terrain to be able to see wherever you are. Next problem we have is its targeting cycle is only six seconds. That means it takes six seconds between when it's identified a target and when it hits it. That's actually a good thing and a bad thing for us. It's a bad thing because, of course, that's quick, but it's a good thing because it's not zero, which means we can trick it. And you'll see what I mean when we get there. Uh, later on, of course, uh, we have a cheese board, which is a tremendously long range search radar. Again, this thing can pick up stealth aircraft like no problem. Of course, it also has the Gravestone, which is the 92N2 uh, fire control radar. This thing is a little unique because um, in this version of Command, unfortunately, it can target in all directions simultaneously. Uh, those of you who know the Patriot know that you can only point the Patriot missile radar in one direction at a time. This system does not have that limitation. In the real world, it does. And unfortunately, that eliminates one of my most favorite ways to kill SAM systems, which is basically to surprise it from behind. We can't do that, which is just it makes things more fun, really. It's also protected by a couple SA-16s. You want to imagine a couple guys, you know, kind of a little uniform pack, just hold that little thing on their shoulder, ready to go at moment's notice. And of course, we have 12 SA-21 launcher systems. 12, which means they can put up 48 missiles in the air if they had to. And of course, taking a look down here, I can take a look that uh, we have a magazine of 32 backups. It's going to take 720 seconds to reload, though. So if we do manage to deplete the battery, uh, we're going to have to work pretty quickly. Next thing I notice coming down this list here, I can see that it has a command data link with 20 channels. That means it can guide up to 20 missiles at a time. That's wonderful news for us, because I know it's a lot of missiles, but that means there's an upper limit. And that upper limit we can take advantage of if we want to use saturation tactics. Okay, let's take a look at the missile itself. Uh, there it is, the SA-21B. You have no idea how big this missile is. I mean, you're looking at this picture going, oh, okay, that looks, looks pretty serious, but you know, how long is it? It's 7.5 meters long. This is a gigantic, gigantic missile. It's a ballistic missile. It basically travels at 150,000 feet. Um, its range is 215 nautical miles. It has a 90% chance of hit, which is like not even fair. It can hit everything from 30 feet up through, look at this, 150,000 feet. So you can actually hit ballistic missiles with this thing, which I think is excessive. But my least favorite thing about attacking this, of course, is this. It has an active radar seeker, and it's very, very good quality, which means if this thing gets a missile off at any target, even if you duck behind a mountain, it's still going to rip you a new one every single time. It also has home on jam. It's all air spec. And of course, it's amazing against the sea skimmer. Now, here's the part that I think is really amusing. If you take a look right here, this thing has 123 damage points. I almost feel like this is a typo because this seems tremendous for a missile, but the fact is anything it touches, it will obliterate. Now look at how confident this weapon is. The only thing it fires two missiles at are things like, you know, F-22s or some fourth generations like MiG-29s, things like that. And the other thing I notice, and this is actually good news, is I can see that against a supersonic weapon, it fires two. Against a ballistic weapon, it fires two. Hmm, that's actually an interesting piece of information. Look at its speed. Oh my god, that's a, what a weapon. What a weapon. Okay, let's go ahead and close that sucker out. Now we know what we're dealing with. Let's actually see the thing in action. So what I have is a handy dandy squadron of MiG-21s here, and they're all equipped with 250 pound, uh, 250 kilogram bombs rather. So we're going to try to uh, use these guys to try to attack the S-400 on its own. Well, there it is. Let's go ahead and order the attack here. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, click on it. Oh boy, I have 96 250 kilogram bombs. Let's see what happens. So the first thing we're noticing is the fact the uh, S-400 is not firing. The reason it's not firing is it's not visually identified the targets that are coming down to bomb on it right now. This is usually the fault of the person who designs the scenario, in which case it's my scenario. So if I switch back to the scene real quick, you can see that they have not identified any of them. But if I were to identify them, watch the turnaround time between I've identified and I've obliterated. <laughs> that's just not fair <laughs> look at it go and that 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 that's that's not cool 
One of the th systems that one of the downsides of the S400 is its default fire control radar does not have non cooperative target recognition in it. That's excellent. That means the this first weakness is the fact that it takes a while to identify targets. So if you can ever set up a situation where you can basically deny the ability to see the target immediately, it will basically be forced to rely on somebody else to identify things for it. So in this case, had I uh, not switched them over to hostile here, these guys would have actually been able to get close. But the whole purpose of this demonstration was to show you that we just shot down an entire squadron of aircraft effortlessly almost within less than a minute's time and you can see how uh, these guys are running for their lives here hoping that they're going to be able to get out of the way of that and honestly they're not going to succeed oh no this is going to be messy oh man i'm sorry guys i'm sorry but i had to demonstrate oh i'm so sorry i'm so sorry game over oh man <laughs> that's just not fair right so that's the first thing you want to think about when you're dealing with this particular aircraft. So let me go ahead and reopen my scenario here. Again, you saw, imagine if we had a little bit more range, it would be more effective. So let's go ahead and delete my MiG-21 squadron. So the first thing we're going to have as far as a problem with this thing is identifying where the heck it is. And there are really a lot of different ways we can identify it. So in this particular scenario, I know it's a water-based scenario. So what I did is I actually set up myself a little submarine. What he's going to do is he's going to pop up, stick all his antennas out of the water. And he's going to be able to identify pretty quickly and pretty easily where it is. So now we have a pretty solid target. Now, if we're going to try to use the naval method to do this, let's, let's, let's try to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, call up some Tomahawk weapons because, you know, I can. So let's see here. Tomahawks. I got 56 of them. And against again, we're looking here at this pretty serious thing, S-400. Um, I don't know. Let's allocate... Uh, what do you think? Uh, let's do 24. All right, 24. Again, this is, um, I don't even want to imagine what the cost of this is. The missiles fire, and they're about to get all obliterated at a range of 215 nautical miles. Oh, and, well, uh, ah, yuck. Well, that did not work. And um, now I'm down a heck of a lot of missiles, and I have nothing to show for it. So you're sitting there going, well, can't you just fire some more? Yeah, I guess I could fire some more. Let's go get another round of them. We'll do all we'll do all 56 Tomahawks. This should work. Yeah, it'll work. Unfortunately, that S-400 ran out of missiles. And it's obliterated. Okay, so you're sitting there here, you know, being a U.S. taxpayer, going, uh, dude, that was not cool, man. That was a lot of weapons. Uh, 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 well, I want to use the Tomahawk thing, but uh, isn't there something else you could do? Uh, the answer is yes, there is something we can do. Now, let me go ahead and uh, go ahead and unpause real quickly. We'll go ahead and get everybody back here. He's going to do his little surfacing thing. He's going to identify it. Life is good. I'm actually going to delete these MiG-21s. We don't need them again. And there he is again, ready to be annihilated. Now, if you remember what I was saying before, that these weapons are extremely effective. They have to basically go ahead and lock on. They have that active terminal radar. Oh, wait a minute. They have to be active terminal radar guidance. Well, what if we jam that guidance? Well, the reality is it's not going to matter because there's no jamming in existence right now powerful enough to actually do anything real. So that's not going to work. Stealth isn't going to work. Um, what about geometry? Now, watch this. So I'm going to go ahead and get my uh, Burke here. I'm going to go ahead and order him to fire. Let's be, let's be stingy. I'm going to use 20. We'll use, we'll use all 24 again this time. However, I'm going to plot a course. Let's see here. I'm going to come up this way. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go this way. And that's what I'm going to do. You're sitting there going, okay, um, that seems like an awful lot of waste of time. Don't you realize that that missile battery is just going to take pot shots? It has half an hour worth of targeting time. I am aware of that. However, I understand how geometry works. Now, what I just did is I set the missiles so that they traveled at about a 90 degree. I'm actually going to, I wish I could edit this waypoint because I did a sloppy job. I've set this up now so that these missiles that are coming into attack have to strike at about a 90 degree angle. Now, I don't know about you, but if you've ever tried to throw a ball of some kind to somebody who's running at a perpendicular angle to you, it's a fairly challenging thing to do. Well, that is the same inside of our game here. So what's going to happen is these missiles are going to come rushing down onto our little handy dandy tomahawks here. However, they're going to be taking a deflection shot. Now watch this. Now notice as soon as they turned and they weren't deflecting anymore, and the battle is already over. Did you see it? Now let's go speed up time here. Da, 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 da. I win. <laughs> now you're sitting there going, okay, what did you do? Well, if you know about how command works, you'll know this trick here. So if I actually go down to endgame and I take a look at how many of these missiles missed, look at this. 
you'll observe that not only did they fire at extreme range, which hurt their intercept, their intercept angle was a staggering 103 degrees, which dropped the probability to hit to 50%. So even though the weapon is a 90% chance of hitting, we dropped it down to a 50, and it's a 90% chance of actually doing damage. So if you actually do the math here, so if we do 48 times uh, 50, we said is about hit round, probably 0.9, ta-da! Theoretically, it would only need 22 missiles in order to do the deed. Remember a minute ago, we needed nearly 48 missiles to do the exact same thing. So that's the first trick I'm gonna kind of pass on to everybody. And honestly, I love that trick. I think it's like cheating, to be honest. So let's try a different strategy. We'll show the next mistake everybody makes. Let's go ahead and grab our setup here. We're actually gonna delete our MiGs. We don't need them anymore. Save my scenario. Okay, so um, what about those folks who are like, well, couldn't you uh, just use like an F-35 or an F-22 or something like that? Okay, we'll try that, we'll try that. Let's go get ourselves a handy dandy F-35. We'll do classic weapon for this. We're gonna get the JSAO, the SDB, which is a really, really good weapon. JSAOs are super tempting, but they're a waste of your time. So let's go down to the SDB. This thing is a really unique weapon because it's super duper 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 thin. I'm actually gonna move my F-35 back a little bit here. Now, the cool thing about an F-35 is it's got that really, really, really sophisticated vision system built into it. So I can actually get really, really low with this thing and basically stick my head just over the horizon, spot the thing, and then come back down. The other great thing about an F-35, of course, is everybody knows its radar is uh, absolutely staggeringly good. So let's see what we got for an altitude. Yeah, we're still pretty high. Of course, this guy is uh, busy targeting my F-35 right here. So as soon as he identifies him or gets within range, there it is. Let's go ahead and shut off my radar. And let's go ahead and deliver my J uh, SDBs here. Boop, fire. Now this is a waste of your time. And I'm about to get shot down. All right. And now, did I mention a second ago that was a waste of your time? And it was a waste of your time. Like I said, you can't do that. Guided weapons actually are terrible for this purpose. So let's try a different strategy. Okay, so that strategy clearly didn't work. Um, what if we had a squadron of 16s? Can we do something with that? Uh, yeah, we could do something with that too. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a squadron of F-16s. Ah, looks good to me, looks good to me. And let's show you how to do this the stupid way. So I'd come like this, I'd say Control F1, i say R-E-K-T, I'd do a land strike like this. I'd be very clever. I'd set this up like that. I'd have them all ready to go. I put them in big nasty bunches in order to make them more efficient. I'd do an off-axis attack. I'd go ahead and uh, make sure they're all set. I'd go ahead and release the thing. I'd let them go ahead and strike. Boop, boop, boop. There they all go. <laughs> so the first thing that's going to happen is our F-16s are going to fire all, the, all their harms. And you can see these harms all get slapped out of the sky pretty effortlessly, except for that one, which managed to get through. We fire another group of harms like this. And those all get through. And meanwhile, our last group of F-16s come rolling in. They drop a bunch of guided munitions. And the entire fight is over before they even know it hit them. You can see my off-axis group did that. And the battle is over. So uh, let's see how we did there. Let's see how we did. Losses and expenditures. Uh, you can see that, let's see here, I lost nothing. <laughs> now you're probably going, well, that was because they didn't automatically identify as hostile. And I'd say, yeah, you're right. So let me show you what happens now if we take advantage of the fact that some enemies will have non-cooperative target recognition. So I'm actually going to switch back over to the other side real fast. I'm going to change their thing here to simulate as if they had better intelligence as to things that were going on. I'll go ahead and say free fire. Now let's do the exact same thing with my massive squadron of F-16s. Now um, I guarantee you this isn't going to go so well. All right, we've identified them. Let's go ahead and call them up. Uh, let's call it Rect 2. This is uh, not Rect 2, this is called Getting Wasted. Let's go ahead and ask this entire squadron. We'll grab groups of six. Uh, that's always a good suggestion whenever you're attacking something you want to do it simultaneously. We'll go ahead and run the scenario again. F-16s launch, and they all got shot down before they even got <laughs> into position. <laughs> okay, let's see uh, what happened there. Let's see what happened. Oh, boy. Woo-hoo! Wah, 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 wah. So that was the biggest waste of F-16s I've ever seen in my life. So that didn't work. And you can see immediately taking advantage of that, uh, basically it's d an ability to identify and target things quickly that gave you that edge that allowed you to be successful the first time. So, um, okay, so I want to use that strategy. I like that strategy. I like my F-16s. I want to actually be able to succeed at this. So what are we going to do? So first things first, I'm going to make sure they have free fire. I want to be fair. I want to be fair. Again, my F-35 would have been shot down, by the way, if I left free fire on, because it would have seen them pretty much earlier. So this time, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create what they call a marshalling point. So 
I'm going to grab these two points here. I'm going to go ahead and create a support mission called Marshalling. Now, you're probably wondering, okay, what are you, what, what are you about? What are you about? What are you about? So I'm going to create a spot on the ground where I can basically let out all of my aircraft to park themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and say um, minimum altitude, I'll say one foot, and I'll say one foot. Again, they're going to go down to 80 feet or so. That's about as low as we can go. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and run the scenario now. What's going to happen is my F-16s are all going to take off, but this time they're going to do the right thing, and they're going to stay at low altitude. So now notice, none of these guys got engaged this entire time. So now they're going to go to my marshalling spot, and they're going to slow themselves down. Now again, these guys are marshalling probably about 80 feet. Yeah, about 80 feet. I'm going to give them a minute to marshal. Okay, everybody's nice and marshaled, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to order my strike. Now, the smart thing to actually do here is actually manually order these guys to do the strike at once. But I'll show you exactly what I want to do. So now, my guys here, these are the laser JDAMs, have a maximum range on the JDAMs of 13 nautical miles, which means they need to get here in order to use that weapon. The other problem they have, is actually safer to come up the side. Eh, probably, mm, yeah, probably that side's going to be the safest side because you got a mountain there. So the other problem is our folks with the harms, believe it or not, are completely in range right now. The thing is, you don't want the harm guys to launch until the JDAM guys launch. You're sitting there going, wait, what, why? Well, remember, we can only fire 20 missiles at a time. That means that if my harms, remember, I have a total of 24 harms here. If I can fire 24 harms, have them be engaged in the time it takes my other folks to get in position and launch, I've already won the fight. So basically what you want to do is use your harms basically to distract it while you let your JDAM crews get as close as possible. Now, the big thing with the JDAM, as anybody will tell you, is the fact you have to be at 10,000 feet to use it safely. So I'm basically going to set up a little mission along the edge here, staying absolutely minimum altitude, cruise speed. And once they get in range, of course, they're going to unload everything. Again, you're going to need every single JDAM you can possibly get your hands on here. We're going to do one of these. Okay, Al. Allocate all. Let's go over to this one over here. It looks good. looks good. Allocate all. And that looks pretty good to me. Let's go get our harm guys. Our harm guys are not going to... I'm going to see, keep this group as a backup in case I need it. My harms, I'm going to get just a teeny tiny bit closer. Let's grab my other harm crew. Harm crew. Again, we're going to be using the harms as a way to distract while everybody else gets into position. So remember, we can't be seen because the island is doing a really nice job. Oh, too late. And that mission was failed. We'll go ahead and dump all the harms we have in the entire inventory. Remember, these weapons are $750,000 US each. So let's go grab the other harm group. Uh, where's our other harm group? That's the JDAM group. That's the other harm group. Yeah, they're the ones, unfortunately, who just got shot at. Fire everything. So I'm about to lose this entire squadron. But it also shows you just how dynamite the system is. Go ahead and fire. It's going to be very, 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 very messy and very, very awful. I really wish they didn't go so wide when they did this. But... Now everybody's firing. Let's grab my last group of JDAMs. They're going to come right up along the side here. They're going to do afterburner speed. Now, sometimes the active radar will actually accidentally go after the harms. All right, where's my other crew? This is my other JDAM crew. No, these are my other harm crew. They're actually on the way home. Unfortunately, when they go home, they go up to maximum altitude, which is a total waste of time. Because when they do that, they get themselves shot down like that. Now notice, everybody's too busy being defensive to actually be doing anything useful. Here comes the next set of missiles, and that entire crew is about to get wasted. Ha ha ha, just kidding! So unfortunately, that was literally just as messy as if we did it the other way. We really needed to take advantage of this axis of the island. Coming out here this wide, because he's on a mountain, he was able to look down over the island and basically spam this guy out of existence. So we'll still be able to kill it at the end of the day, but look at how messy this was. Oh, yuck. Eight's better than 20, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at another method. So again, we're having some fun here. We're having some fun. Um, can I do this with one F-16? Hmm... You're sitting there going, I like this, I like this, I like where you're going with this. Let's get one F-16. I call this the DCF method. We'll get a, da, 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 a 2008 model. I don't want anything fancy. But what I do really, 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 really want is I want to make sure that I'm carrying something that is CBU-like. Uh, that looks good to me. And I'm going to put him right here. I'm going to have him kind of come up this side of the island, kind of do one of those. Minimum altitude, military, go. Keep in mind, I would launch him from the base. All right, here we go. 
So is it possible to use a single F16 to do the same exact job? The answer is yes, but the trick is you want to take advantage of as much of the geography of the island as you possibly can. In this case, all this nasty rough stuff, this is going to be the most dangerous moment for the F-16 right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pop up right on top of him, and I'm going to dump the entire inventory that I possess on him all at once. Delightful. So now here's the trick. So one of these things is when you do choose to use this kind of like terrain masking here and try to keep yourself as low as possibly possible, possible, possible. One of the tricks is the faster you go, the wider your turns become. So when I actually go to take this turn right here, if I try to take it the way it is, I'm actually going to come all the way out here and he's going to get a free shot at me. So one of the tactics to kind of get around that is to actually make the turn a little bit tighter. So when you do finish the turn, you'll already be in a position to kind of zip through. So I'm actually going to try to get through this valley right here. Next trick you want to do is you want to get yourself up to as maximum throttle as you possibly can. All right, here we go. This is the DCS method. He's looking at us, but he can't get a hit on us. Remember, we're tracking him right now based on the submarine. So we're going to go ahead and take our first turn here. Uh oh, don't do that. See how he does a really, 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 really wide turn there? You can actually slow him down to nothing, so you can take that turn a lot tighter. Come on down this way. Yep, now I'm going to slow him down a little bit. Speed him back up. Okay, this is so dangerous. This is so dangerous. Okay, this is going to be the death mode. Okay, he's trying to slow down a little bit here. Trying to slow down. Again, I'm just trying to make that turn a little bit tighter. He's still concealed by the side of the mountain. Can he do it? Just remember, when we come out of this turn, we have to book it. And coming out of the turn now, this is the most dangerous part. Go. All right. So remember, it takes him six seconds between identifying the F-16 and actually doing the deed. So he's ripping. He's about 272 feet. I believe the S-300 crew is about to fire. But guess what? Bam! <laughs> nice. We actually got them using a single F-16. Yes, I think you just realized that cost me an F-16 to do. Sometimes when I do that, I get lucky and I get them like right around the corner and it actually works well. But again, a single F-16, that's all I needed. If I tried to do this with GBUs, it would have been a waste of our time. Now, if I wanted to be more thorough, you probably would have brought one to bring two F-16s with you as opposed to one and actually hit, like I said, simultaneously. So if they got one, the other one will not get hit as well. Okay, so now I'm going to show you two more te techniques that we can use to actually defeat this thing. Let's go ahead and take a look at the easy way. So the first thing I always like to do, well, when I'm evaluating scenarios, ask, you know, is there a really, 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 really easy way to do things? And sometimes you get super duper lucky. Now I'm actually going to grab this real quick. 120 millimeter mortar. Oh, let's go ahead and grab a generic one. It's plenty fine for me. And sometimes you get the ability to actually land troops. And uh, when you land troops, you know, if you want to save some time, we can just use troops to do the deed here. Da, 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 fire. Thunk, 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 thunk. Now, I'm sure this uh, crew is sitting here being a little bit depressed. Oh, by the way, um, this S-400 cannot engage uh, bombs. So if you drop conventional bombs, it actually works really, really well. Same thing with artillery. You could use machine guns. You could use the cannon on an F-18. You could use absolutely anything and everything possible to go ahead and do the deed here. In this case, I've actually used naval artillery for this purpose. But again, if you can manage to land a 120mm crew and just kind of let them go to town, you can just sit here all afternoon and uh, about 600 rounds later, oh, we ran out of ammo. Uh, we've absolutely plastered that battery. So that was pretty easy. Okay, one last technique we're going to take a look at today. This technique is fun. So uh, one thing I've had kind of hidden over this entire time is I've had this over here. It's a B-52. So the B-52 carries something called the JASSM, which is uh, also known as basically it's the joint. Uh, it's basically a specialized missile if you want to attack mod super modern crews. It's also a stealth missile. So the reason this is so cool is because not only do we get the benefit of using uh, cruise missiles, but we also get the benefit of using a stealth cruise missile. So uh, we'll use them all. We don't need this many, but um, whatever. Hey, they're free. It's a game. All right, missiles get launched. <laughs> and I win. <laughs> That's it. So let's see what we had for losses and expenditures. Uh, let's see here. Oh, yep, splattered. Uh, did it get a missile off? No, didn't even get a missile off. And that's why the JASM is dynamite. It's, again, a super-duper ultra-cruise missile. And, again, you can use that strategy I showed you earlier to make it even more effective. So um, let's have a little bit more fun now. So uh, what else can we use against one of those pesky S-400s that's like a cheese tactic? Ah, here we are. The ironic method, I like to call it, also known as the Iskander, which is uh, basically it's a ballistic missile. 
Now, the reason ballistic missiles are so dynamite is because of their speed. So I'm going to go ahead and fire all the ballistic missiles, just like that. Go ahead and unpause. All the missiles go up. And now notice what happens here. The S-400 immediately fired early and basically completely whiffed the ballistic missiles during their climb phase. Because remember, the ballistic missiles have to accelerate. Next thing you know, they actually spread into these re-entry vehicles, which, by the way, are super duper unique because they actually have some uh, built-in jamming, which I think is actually really, really cool. They're also huge weapons, so it makes them very, very, very effective. All right, let's continue watching here. All right, so far my ballistic missiles are dropping out of the orbit here. And let's see what happens this time. Boom! And now that's another S-400 absolutely positively splattered. Okay, so now you're sitting there going, okay, so, so far you've, you've showed me a bunch of different ways to deal with this thing. And, you know, I'm appreciating what you're doing here. But, uh, you know, sometimes people set up scenarios where you don't have some terrain to hide behind. You know, is there some kind of jamming or something that we could take advantage of? Actually, there is, and um, one of the neat the platforms actually for this, I'll go ahead and share this with you really quick as we're on our way out. There is actually a uh, decoy, and I'm gonna go get my one. I have to remember which one it is. Uh, da, 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 da. That's not a decoy, it's a, um, yeah, that's fine, it's a decoy. Let's see here, I'm just trying to remember exactly which one this is. Ah, okay, here we go. So there's a bunch of really, really fun jammer decoys, such as stuff like this, which you can actually launch, and because they're jammer decoys, it basically annoys the heck out of the S-400 and causes it not only to be attacked, but it also jams anything that you're going to be sneaking in with it. So it's actually a very, very, very effective way to kind of get around those kind of problems. Uh, one thing you want to watch out for, by the way, is don't be the guy who sends a bunch of those really old school ones off in F-14. If you do that, uh, they're not even going to be engaged. They're kind of a waste of your time. So kind of just keep that in the back of your head as well. And then, of course, last but not least, like I said, um, an S-400 is only as deadly as when it has ammunition. You can always hit it with everybody's favorite cheese strategy of basically sitting there at long range and zigzagging out of it so that it basically wastes all of its missiles and then you strike it from a different side. But again, I just wanted to show you how you could kind of take a look at some of the different strategies. In conclusion, the S-400 is a dynamite system, but at the end of the day, uh, consider the WRA, consider its weapon limitation, uh, always set up shots that are going to be beaming, which uh, wastes its energy so that it uh, makes it an easier shot. That works for airplanes too, by the way, because if you put airplanes at a 90 degree angle to it, it has a much less chance of hitting that airplane. You could even send a whole squadron if you're out uh, extremely brave and go them zigzag and 90 degrees and basically waste the entire battery. Uh, the other problem you're always going to face, of course, is trying to locate where the battery is. A lot of modern scenarios have satellites, which makes this whole process a whole lot easier to do. But other than that, uh, hopefully this has been helpful. Enjoy.